Hello friends. NASA has around 25 times more money than ISRO. This has been the case for many years. Because of this, ISRO's big projects have been a bit slower. But have you ever thought about what would happen if ISRO had NASA's money? In today's video, we'll talk about what ISRO would do with NASA's budget and if it could do better than NASA. When we talk about an organization's success, it's important to know the background. So, let's first find out how much money NASA and ISRO had when they started. If you're even a little interested in stars, galaxies, or space, you probably know about NASA and ISRO. NASA was established about 10 years ago, not long after ISRO. But when we talk about NASA's beginning and achievements, it has its origins linked to a group called the United States National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, NACA. Back in 1783, a new country was formed after gaining freedom from British control. Up until 1914, America was behind Europe in aviation. To catch up, in 1914, the U.S. Congress created a part of the Army Signal Corps to focus on aviation. Then, in 1915, NACA was set up for researching and developing aviation. After the Second World War, NACA started working on making guided missiles and superfast airplanes. During this effort, they began testing an aircraft called the Bell X-1. This project was done with the U.S. Air Force. Because of their work in rocketry, Nake's interest in space exploration also grew. So friends, let us tell you here that the Cold War has played a big role in the establishment of NASA. Back in 1947, after World War II, the United States and the Soviet Union, which were like really powerful countries, didn't like each other much. They had different ways of doing things, and they both wanted to have powerful weapons, especially nuclear bombs. They also wanted to explore space and put satellites up there. The Soviet Union surprised everyone in 1957 by launching the first satellite, called Sputnik. This made people think they were really good at space stuff. They even sent a dog named Laika to space in another satellite. The United States got serious and launched its own satellite, called Explorer 1, a bit later. This competition between the two countries sped up the progress of space technology a lot. They both worked really hard to make better rockets and satellites. It all led to the United States landing astronauts on the moon in 1969, which was a huge deal. So, basically, after World War II, the U.S. and the Soviet Union didn't get along and tried to be the best at space and powerful weapons. The Soviet Union sent the first satellite, but the U.S. caught up and even put people on the moon. In the meanwhile, an Indian scientist, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, was quite inspired by the development of space technology. Especially after the launch of Sputnik in 1957, he realized how important space development is for the development of a country. By 1962, he had convinced Jawaharlal Nehru that India should have its own space program. Friends, this was the birth of ISRO. In 1975, ISRO was getting ready for its first satellite launch. They used only one computer borrowed from Russia and even part of a church bathroom for their work. They even transported their satellites using bullock carts. But now, ISRO is among the world's top space agencies. They launched 104 satellites together and set a record by reaching Mars on their first try in March. On August 23rd, India's space agency, ISRO, successfully landed its Chandrayaan-3 mission's lander module on the moon's surface. However, despite these achievements, ISRO hasn't sent a human to space yet. This might not sound like a big problem, but think about it. When NASA started in 1958, it only took them 11 years to send people to space. But ISRO hasn't been able to do it even now. Why? One reason is that ISRO has always had a smaller budget compared to others. For instance, during the Chandrayaan-2 mission, ISRO didn't have enough money to buy lunar soil from NASA, so they got creative. They brought a special stone from Tamil Nadu and used it to test their moon rover. They learned that they needed to improve the rover's braking system and use six wheels instead of four. Similarly, for the Mars mission, ISRO had to work with a tight budget of $74 million. 
while NASA had much more for a similar mission. If ESRO had more money, they could have done even more, like sending humans to Mars. Despite their limited budget, ESRO's team showed incredible talent. They chose a complicated path to Mars, involving tricky maneuvers instead of a simpler route. And still, they successfully put their spacecraft, Mangalayan, into Mars's orbit. ESRO has a unique way of proving things indirectly. NASA, a big space agency, had to steal data from ISRO's moon mission because they couldn't get it themselves. During the Chandrayaan A1 mission, NASA's device called M3 and ISRO's device called Impact Probe were used to find water on the moon. The Impact Probe found water and sent the data to Chandrayaan, which then sent it to ISRO. But it also sent an error signal, saying one of its sensors was not working. This helped ISRO confirm if there was really water on the moon. But NASA used the data to announce that they found water on the moon before ISRO. This was not the first time the U.S. was trying to control ISRO. They suspected the U.S. was behind cancelling a deal between India and Russia for cryogenic engines and accusing ISRO scientist Nambi Narayanan of being an anti-nationalist. The U.S. had been spying on ISRO since the 1970s and wanted to control ISRO's technology. But ISRO didn't give up. If their missions had gone according to plan, ISRO might have been as successful as NASA. But the U.S. tried to stop ISRO from developing its own technology. If the Indian government had given more money to ISRO instead of other sectors, ISRO might have been more successful. But because of economic problems, ISRO had to wait to develop its technology. If we look at ISRO's recent budget, it might take about five to seven years after launching Gaganyan for the space station program to be completed. If ISRO gets a budget 25 times larger than what it has today, it could finish all its big projects much sooner. For comparison, the Apollo mission of the U.S. cost around $25.8 billion, causing economic challenges despite America being well-developed. Back in the 1980s, when India was trying to stabilize itself and had a literacy rate of about 30%, it faced even bigger challenges. This is why ISRO's existence today might seem uncertain. However, saying that if ISRO had a budget as big as NASA's, India would surpass the U.S. isn't entirely correct. ISRO's founder Vikram Sarabhai believed that even with a huge budget, ISRO's main goal would be solving real problems for humanity and India's economy. Still, a bigger budget would help ISRO complete more missions. More missions mean more success stories, which could lead to growth in India's space sector. Pushing India's development, scientific advancements would also improve education, more opportunities for jobs in space and science would open up. Despite its smaller budget, ISRO has achieved significant milestones, like Mangalayan, Chandrayaan-3, upcoming missions, and successful indigenous missile development, all of which have gained attention globally. Today, most countries prefer working together rather than fighting or competing. They believe that by sharing ideas and technology, they can make things better and save money. This progress is not just for one country, but for everyone in the world. I hope you learned something new today. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you like this video, you can watch more on space-related topics, such as on the Chandrayaan-3 or time travel. You can click here to watch those. Thank you very much.